Got your Bibles, let's go to John chapter 14. I'm only going to read one verse, and a very important verse. It's verse 66 of John chapter 14. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this time I could preach this message. I ask you to anoint my lips of clay and touch the hearts and lives of the people who hear this message. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The One Way. The One Way is the title. There's a story I've told many a time and Right now, I haven't even been able to find any copies of it for a while. I hope I tell it right. But it deals with a young man who God was dealing with him. But because of all the different religions of the world, he was confused as to which one really was the right one. He got out and he started going to the library and studying books on different faiths and religions. The four main ones he concentrated on was Zoroastrianism, Confucianism, Buddhism, and Christianity. I'm sure he probably looked in the others, but those are the four main ones. Well, this young man, still bitterly confused and not knowing which direction to go, he decided one night to just after studying that evening to go ahead and go to sleep. He felt it was futile to continue on studying for that night. As he was sleeping, this man fell into a pit of clay or is actually in a pit of miry clay he was stuck he was trapped he could not get out of that clay he was trapped and he felt there was no way out i'm just going to tell you this that represents mankind thoroughly man is born in sin the bible says for behold i was Shape and iniquity and sin. Did my mother conceive me? Psalm 51 verse 5. You read Romans chapter 3, 9 through 20. You'll find that all men have sinned. And have come short of the glory of God. And it says in verse 23. That same chapter. I'm telling you tonight. Man was born in sin. I also do believe man chooses sin when they get older. But regardless, this man was already stuck and could not get out. And he felt absolutely hopeless. But as he was there, he looked up and recognized one of the leaders. Now, I don't know as much about him as the other ones I'm going to bring up. He looked up, and there was Zoroaster. There's a lot about them I don't know very, very little, in fact. I looked up a little bit about them just earlier, and I was actually baffled by what I read. <laughs> Predominantly in India, there might only be 200,000 followers worldwide. But anyway, this man... When he saw Zoroaster, he cried, Help! I'm trapped in the pit. You know what he did? He threw some coals of fire down. He said, Now if you follow these coals of fire, you can get out. The man tried to follow him, but it was stuck. And Zoroaster went away anyway. He was trapped. He struggled more and more 
looked like there was no hope at all. You know what happened next? He looked up and saw Confucius. As he looked up and saw Confucius, he yelled, Help! Help! Help me out of here! Well, you know what Confucius did? He looked down at him. He said, He that doth not go near a pit shall not fall therein. He walked away. Here he was, more stuck than ever. Nice at wisdom, I'm not going to deny that. But he was already in that pit and could not get out. The next one, as it started to get dark that day, as he struggled, he looked down and he saw Buddha. Buddha looked benignly on him. He yelled help for him. All Buddha did was just give him a long lecture on the joys of those who do not go near pits. You know, he's already trapped there. He didn't know it needed a lecture on how to avoid falling in a pit that time. He was already there. Buddha went away. It was dark by then. <clears throat> All hope of him getting out was gone and finally came Jesus he, when he saw Jesus he looked up and he said Jesus help I need out of the pit rather than Jesus giving him a long lecture he fell down upon the ground he took his nail scarred hand he reached down and grabbed that man by the hand. He pulled him up out of the pit. He washed him off. Then he pointed him to the path of life. Now that's when he needed the lecture about not falling in a pit, isn't it? He was washed. He was made clean. The Lord took him and said, to the path of life and said go and sin no more the young man woke up realizing that Jesus is the only way the only truth and the only life no man can come to his father but by him it's sad that many are trying other ways but see Jesus is different from these other the religious leaders are so-called gods. For one thing, Jesus himself was God. The Bible says, Amen, that he, I am my Father one. No, I believe in the Trinity. But I do believe that they're one in the sense they're both God. Number two, Jesus paid the price for sin. Isaiah 53, verse 5. He was a wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. A chastisement our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. The Bible says <clears throat> that he, uh, the Bible says, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God committed his love towards us. And while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. He not only died, but he rose again. Romans chapter 10, 9, 10. For thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, the, with mouth confession is made unto salvation. There's no other name under heaven whereby man can be saved. In Acts 4.12 He is the Son For God so loved the world He gave His only begotten Son That whosoever believe Him Should not perish But have everlasting life Jesus died For your sin He died for mine 
And today we can be forgiven of our sins. We can be justified with God. That is, in the sense, we're put in a position as though we had never sinned. We are redeemed. We are bought back. We are children of the devil. Now by faith we're child, children of God. Sinner friend, why not receive Jesus today? Why not confess your sin? Say, Father God, I have sinned. I have disobeyed your laws. And Father God, I now repent of those sins. For I am indeed sorry to where I want to be delivered and set free from them. Never to walk that path again. And now, Heavenly Father, I ask you that your risen Son, Jesus, the one who died for me on the cross, the one that paid the ultimate price and rose again. Heavenly Father, I ask you to let your Son come in my heart and life and save me from my sins and deliver me. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Did you receive Christ today? If not, why not? There's no other name for with you can be saved at the name of Jesus. One last thing, if you don't get saved, you will like the rest of the world at the day of judgment. According to Philippians chapter 2, 9 through 11, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. He's either your Lord now. Or you'll be crying he is Lord. On that day and it's too late. I believe the saints will, say, will cry Jesus is Lord. They've already bowed. The sinners will cry Jesus is Lord. I'm even in the camp. The devil and his demons will cry Jesus is Lord at that day. The only name where we can be saved. If you don't know Jesus now, please let him in today. God bless you.